So yesterday we have learned a little bit about if we know the product of two or three numbers and when we can find the smallest or the biggest value of their sum. So today we're going to more focused on how to use these kind of concept in the real life. Okay, I know there are a lot of students ask me why we're learning the math, why the math is so important for us. It's actually math is everything in our life. Okay, so you're going to find out actually we're using a lot of those concepts in the real life. Okay, so we have learned this one already. And let's take a look at this one. The area of a rectangle is 1050 centimeters square. What is a maximum value and the minimum value of this perimeter? Okay, this is something very useful. Why? Because if you are making, for instance, uh, you're using a wire or some a lot of the uh, wood to build uh, a garden, okay? So the garden, for instance, is like that. And you know that you want this particularly what the area of this garden to be 1050 centimeters square. Okay, so I want to ask all of you a question is you want to use a lot of material to making this garden, or you want to use the less material, the better. Of course, the less material, the better, right? So if you are, for instance, a worker, and you want to get the money from the owner, you're going to say, hey, if you hire me, then I can save that much amount of material for you, because I'm good at math. So how do we do it? Because the material of making this rectangular garden is actually what is his perimeter. Perimeter is what? Perimeter is a sum. Okay, and the area is the product, right? Because the area equals what? The area equals the width times length. The perimeter equals width plus length times two. Right, so basically it's width plus width plus length plus length. Right, so we can, that means this question turned out to be what? Turned out to be we know the product and we want to find out what is the sum's minimum value. Correct? So who tell me math is useless? Math is very useful because if you learn math well, then you can save a lot of money by building the same area of the rectangular garden. So let's see how much money we can save. So first one, let's just calculate the minimum value. So in order to do that is the width times length equals 1050, right? So if we want to get the maximum value, so that means use as many as material we can, we just easily make the width equals one and the length equals 1050. So the answer will be one plus the minimum value of W plus L plus L plus W, which is the perimeter, the maximum value of the perimeter is one plus 1,050 plus one plus 1,050. So the answer will be 2,102 centimeters. So you're going to use that long materials, that much materials. So if one centimeter costs you $1, so that means you have to spend $2,102. So how about we find the perimeter's minimum, okay? So the perimeter minimum still is W plus W plus W plus plus length plus length. So we're going to prime factorization it. So it'll be 2525. Three, one, one, seven, five, and five, twenty, sorry, thirty five, and five, and seven. So the answer will be two times three times five times five times seven equals one thousand fifty. So which one's width, which one's length? Of course, we want to make them the smallest differences, then the number will be smallest. So, of course, I'm going to put six times five and five times seven. So it'll be 30 times 35. So width equal 30, sorry, width equal, usually width is the smallest one. So 30 and the length is 35. So 30 plus 35 plus 30 plus 35. So the minimum of the perimeter 
will be 60 times 70 equals 130 centimeters. So if one centimeter costs $1, it's only cost you $130. While the difference is, is around 1,800. So who said math is useless? By knowing math, you can save yourself $1,800. And $1,800, you can buy so many things, right? <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the number two. So A, B, C, D are four natural numbers. So we have learned the natural numbers long time, right? So natural numbers is integers, and there's no negative and no zeros. So A, B, C, D times together equals 546. What is the biggest possible value of A plus B plus C plus D? Okay, this question doesn't say that A, B, C, D cannot be equals to each other. So that's why the easiest is what? Yes, make them the six the better. So it's 546 plus three equals 549. Okay, but what if I told you that A and B and C and D cannot be equals to each other? So that means only one of the number could equals one, but the rest of them cannot be equals one anymore. So equals two, two, so seven, three, then two, so one, three, Mm, sorry, there's no two, what I'm doing <laughs> should be three, right? So 91, so 91 is divisible by seven is 13. Okay, so this one equals two times three times seven times 13. So in order to make them the difference is the bigger, the bigger, the better. I'm going to put two and three and 91. Okay, so you put them together equals one plus two plus three plus 91. So the answer is yes, 97. Okay, so how about let's try to find out what is the minimum value of A plus B plus C plus D. So in order to make them the differences, the smaller the better. So it's one of them must equals to each other. So it's two plus three plus seven plus 13. So the answer is 25 okay so you're going to see that the difference is actually is very huge right because this biggest is could be 549 but the smallest could be 25. so we spend a lot of time discussing about uh, how to use the mean minimum and maximum value of the real life okay i hope everybody so far enjoyed today's class and tomorrow will be more focused on some harder questions okay i hope you enjoyed today's class and we're going to see each other tomorrow bye bye